Hey, in this video we're going to save a lot of different player settings and player scores and true-false values all in one class. We're going to serialize it and save it with player preps. So when you restart the game, it'll remember all the things that uh, that's happened already. So we saw in the last video a simple way to just save integers with player preps dot set int and get int and we saved the number of times we shot the little red ball and it created a file like this and that's nice but the problem is that if you have 10 different scores and 20 different settings and all these things you don't want to be littering your code with set int set string all over the place it'd be a big mess so we're going to contain lots of different values in one class Okay, so I've written some code that's not too interesting, just to get it out of the way. We're going to keep track of how often I've jumped, how often I've shot the red ball, uh, how many seconds I've played, and if I've set a mute audio setting, okay? So what this is going to do is on update, it's just going to check, you know, did I jump? If I did, add a point. If I clicked to shoot, add a point. If, uh... Every time I add to the seconds that I've played, if I press M, so it's going to keep track of all that, and this is just going to show me what those values are every second. So that's what we have here. Uh, you can see jump count is zero, now it's at one, now it's at two, I'm shoot a whole bunch, red count is at eight. Seconds are going up, and if I press M, now mute audio is true. So we're keeping track of that, but of course if I shut it down and then press play again, it all starts, goes back to zero. That's no good. Now what I could do somewhere is I could do player press set int and I could do jump count and, you know, add, I could do this all the time whenever I do a jump count and just put a whole bunch of set int, set bool, set string here. It would kind of become a mess. Instead, I'm just going to keep track of a class, and we're going to do this by making a new class because you can't actually serialize a mono behavior. These classes on the right that you can attach to a game object, you can't actually turn them into an XML like this. The game doesn't, uh, Unity doesn't let you do that. So we're going to make a new class. We're just going to call it player values. And notice it's not a mono behavior, so I can't attach this to anything. I've actually got to add serializable to tell the Unity that we can turn this into a string if we want to. And now I'm actually going to move all of these, going to move them right here. Make them public, because now there's another class that's going to be trying to look at these values. And in here, instead of having all those ints and bools and floats, we're actually going to have just one of, whoops, player values right here, and we're going to call it player values. So we're going to need two new functions here. One is going to be load player values. The other one is going to be, oh, void, right. And the other one is going to be save player values. So when we start, we're going to want to load those values. And actually down here, we're going to want to save those values every time. We have to do this every frame because seconds played is going to change. So we're saving a lot, but whatever, it's not a big deal. You notice now these variables are all red because they don't exist anymore. So we've got to get it from this player values that we have instead. Mute, mute, mute. So set mute to not the value of mute. So it toggles it here, and that's what that does. And this one's okay. Save it. Same thing here. If I want to show, I'm going to have to add this. So now it's just a matter of saving and loading this player values class. So let's start with save player values so that we can see what serializing actually means. 
We're going to need a few tools at the top here. So you're going to have to write all of these. That's going to let us make a serializer. It's going to be a new serializer of type. So you need to give it the type of class that this serializer is going to be working with, which is our player values. So first, let's see what this is going to look like. We want to make a string writer. It's going to be a new string writer. This using part just means when we're done with string writer, it's going to safely close and delete this object. So now with our serializer, we want to serialize and we'll show the results soon. I'm going to serialize this player values object we have. And I want to just, instead of saving it, let's just see the result. See the result of string writer to string. So every time we save, actually this is going to happen a lot. Uh, that'll be okay. We'll get, we'll get one good example. So I'm gonna, oh, it's not working. 50, it's angry. Ah, uh, yes, of course. So player values starts at nothing, because I, load just didn't do anything. Okay. Well, for now, we'll just fill it in like this. We'll just make a new one. This should be okay now. That code's not so important. We're going to replace it later. Okay, now it's good. So let's fire a little bit and then stop. So let's have a look at what this has produced down here. If you click on one of these and on the bottom, you'll get the whole thing. I'm going to copy this. And this is what it's going to look like. So this is that string that it produced. So you can see there's got these values and it saved the time and it saved how many times I've shot. So Unity is going to be able to read this string, and all we got to do is do player prefs dot set string and load string, and then reverse that process and turn it into a class again. So instead of just showing us that result right here, I'm going to want to save it actually. So I want to save this result, and that's going to be player prefs set string, and this time let's just go with player values. The value is going to be a string. It's just that big XML string that I just showed you. So we can then retrieve this even after we've shut down the game. Now that's only going to save it. We want to load it as well. So let's load. We're going to do a similar, we need a serializer again. I'm going to get rid of that line. So when we load, we need a serializer. We're going to try to get the text. I say try because we it might not exist yet. The first time it won't exist. Play, player values. So there's a chance now that text is just empty. If I haven't set it yet, it's going to be empty. So we are going to have to check for that, because if you try to serialize and convert an empty string into a class, it's going to freak out. So this is going to be the case if it's empty. What are we going to do? Well, let's just do what we had before, where it's just going to be a new empty player values. However, if it's not empty, we need to convert it here. So much like that using before, we're going to get a reader. It's going to use that text, which we know is not empty. It's actually going to be that XML now. And we're going to make our player values is going to be a new player values class, but we're going to build it by reading that file, deserializing it. As and as is going to make sure that it actually becomes that player values type class. 
If it reads the XML and it's a different type of XML, this is going to have a problem, but it is going to be the right type, so it'll be okay. So let's save that. Press play. So we've got the time passed. Maybe I shoot a bit. I press M to mute the audio. Now when I turn it off, press play again. It actually remembers all those settings, so that's great. Now the advantage to this method here is if I want to, I can change player values. It's very easy for me to add something now. Public bool other thing equals true. And now by just adding that, I don't have to worry about player pref set bool or anything like that. It'll automatically be saving and loading it just by serializing it. You can do this with all kinds of stuff in here. There's, you know, array lists and arrays and lists and all kinds of larger things or collections of classes. You just uh, have to make sure it's all serializable. One little warning is as you're developing, if you change this dramatically and you already have a string that exists, it might be a little, it might freak out a little bit. So every now and then you might want to clear this get string. So just set it back to zero and it'll restart itself. Or you could make a method reset player values. And this is going to be what you're going to want to do to just clear it. Set it to what? Well, just empty. So this is going to, if you really change your class a lot, maybe you want to have a method like this. And one last tip, right from last video two, you can see now that I'm writing player values a lot, I'm repeating myself. Well, what if I had accidentally done this? You might have almost missed it, and you're going to have some weird bugs with that. So if you're ever repeating yourself, it's always a good idea to have something like this. And I could even really mess it up. I actually really did, but that's okay. And I can just use the same value for all of these and it'll be okay now. I don't have to worry about that. So I hope you found this video useful. I've used this system before for this uh, open source game to keep track of which levels you've beaten and what your high scores are. And I found it really useful. So thanks for watching.